well, I had it on unlisted before and I was like, wait, nobody's coming into the chat. All right, let's do this. The good, the bad, and the ugly about these friggin' diets and why I want them to completely smash burn and go away. <laughs> uh, somebody made a comment to me saying, or like on one of the social media, uh, the carnivore gurus are getting pissed because I want carnivore to die and go away and I want keto to die off and go away. Yes. And the reason why, and by the way, hello to everyone coming into my chat. This is a, people do coffee chat. I do water chats. We're going to cover everything like what to drink on these diets, why they, they are good, bad, and ugly, how to fix the problem. Basically uh, a live Q and A. What's up, Med Zub? All right, well, let's crack on into it. Let's talk about, so we've seen false statements by so many people, exactly. So let's go into the good, the bad, and the ugly. Should we start with the bad? Sh let's start with the good. And I, I definitely want these diets to completely crash and burn and die, all of them. And the reason why I want to do that is because when, it, when anything that's mainstream completely just like it stops trending and nobody's into it anymore. They go underground. And when they go underground, that's where the fun is. That's right. We're going to go solar priest is like, we're going to go back to Kutopia land. We're going to cross that bridge. I want these diets to go underground. I'm just sick of them being commercialized. Carnivore is trending right now. Somebody said, right. Carnivore is trending. Yes, fool. Carnivore is trending. Yes. Once it goes from, I, uh, I'm trying to fix my autoimmunity or my blood sugar, insulin and histamine to, I want to lose weight. It's trending people wake up. <claps> Other people who think that it's not trending. The histamine lecture is so me. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about all that histamine, all that stuff. All right, so I really want this diet to freaking go away. Carnivore, please go away. Keto, please go. Just go back to before no one knew about it. That's when it was the best. So much learning was going on back then. So Priest says, I had butter ribeye and broccoli. Okay, that's awesome. All right, let's go into some of these things on why it is good before I start telling you why it sucks. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, the reason why these diets are great is because even though I want them to die, you think you're having gallbladder pain, TMI, yellow colored. Yellow is typically from leaky gut. I hate to tell you. Pale, like an ashy color, like my elbow right now. See that ashy? That's the color poo poo. That is bad. So it could be just really bad leaky gut, but I digress. Um, if it's really, really yellow, unless it's sort of a green tint and that could be bile, but I don't think so. Okay. So essentially, um, what I like about, uh, we'll start with keto cause that's what I do. And I, I choose a ketogenic diet because of the diversity of food that you do not get on carnivore strict. Right. I like the fact that I can get my macro and my mic micronutrients from animal fat, plant fat, some, and protein and vegetation. I like that. I like the diverse diversity of bacteria and minerals and the ability to get fiber not for, not to poop, but f to make diamine oxidase and, and methyl transferase. Those are enzymes. Oh, did I forget? I got to silence this. Hold on. We're going to take off the buzz on this. One sec, guys. Okay, I'm back. No more buzzing. Okay. Um... 
it's really good. So if we if we take if we even even if we take and I'll, I'll get to you guys' comments in a second. If we take low carb, high fat, I should have put that in there as well. It's a good place to start if you know you have hypoglycemia, gallbladder issues, or your thyroid's freaking out. One of the three reasons. Yeah, that's those are the three reasons why you would do low carb, high fat. That includes the thingy. That includes um, starch. So please don't do carnivore and fruit. When you hear that, that is stupid. Okay, that is dumb times a million. A lot of you guys have histamine who are doing carnivore, where a lot of you guys have fructose intolerance because see the fruit today, it's been genetically modified. Not even just selectively bred or hybridized, modified, Frankenstein. And it's got like exorbitant amount of fructose in it, which a lot of you guys are having issues with that fructose. And then the sugar, hypoglycemia, right? And then the histamine to these fruits, because somebody goes, eat a bunch of meat and fruit and honey. Do not do that. That is stupid. You cannot get into ketosis. Fruit is not going to store glycogen. Mm -mm. It's very quick. It's like freaking... Occutane fast burning 10 minutes of energy. Now you're going to be in hypoglycemic slam. Then you're going to be like, I do carnivore and coffee. Like, you cannot make this stuff up. So, um, uh, I'm going to get to all you guys' comments in a second. Don't forget to like up the stream. Uh, so what's good about I'm still in keto, keto. we're going to go to carnivore. What's good about keto is the diversity of food, right? Then the main thing that's amazing is um, the fact that you get into ketosis. Oh, what? People are like, why do you do a ketogenic diet? I'm like, because it's the bomb. What's up, Maureen? The bomb. Like, you can't make this stuff up. Like, it is so amazing. I've done it for so many freaking years. And I've been online so many freaking years that I can tell you that your energy is so stable. Like there's no dips, there's no swings, there's no like, blah, 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 blah. I'm so sleepy, I need to take a nap. You just feel good. So this is going to balance your serotonin because when you have adrenal responses, your serotonin crashes, right? And then when your serotonin dips, so does your melatonin, the production of melatonin because it's made from, yes, it's melatonin is made from serotonin. And any time you guys have hypoglycemia, y'all don't sleep well. So ketones are like big chunky logs in a fireplace. They burn very even and for a long time. So you can go and leave your home for five hours or six hours while those big chunky logs burn and it just heats the house. If you're dealing with, um, um, by the way, I have to do a video on this. Oh my God, boof. Well, that, I can have the address because I don't live there anymore. <laughs> and it's B.O. Box. Okay, holy moly. Okay, I digress. It's all backwards. Um, it's like burning paper. So basically, if when you eat carbs, if I lit this on fire, it's gonna burn up in two seconds. You're gonna feel like a flash of energy, but then it's gone. And when that paper burns out, you crash hard. What's up, Rachel? So that's why ketones are so amazing. People ask me what's so great about ketones. When you do low carb, high fat, because some people are like, I want carbs in my diet. Like the ones who don't have hypoglycemia, they're like, I want carbs. Like I want carbs. I'm like, okay, if you miss the window of refilling glycogen storage, your adrenals take a hit. Your hormones take a hit. Now, it's better than the standard American diet, but still, even but with eating starch, which be, would be things like rice or parsnip or sweet potato, um, no wheat. No. Uh, maybe oats. Mm. Cross-reactivity. Mm. Uh, you cannot use sweet uh, uh, fruit and, like, yellow squash for low carb high fat. You must need a starch. You don't do it for the nutrient density. You do it for the storage of glycogen in the muscle. That's why you do it. 
right? Or, or you also do it because you have hypoglycemia. Even people who've got hypoglycemia so bad do really, really awful on starch. Some people are just like, what do I do, Stephanie? I have really bad hypoglycemia and I do really bad on carbs. And I'm like, well, we got to do a strategy where you might have to eat two to every three hours certain foods throughout the day and put together, put together with the people programs for this type of diet if your hypoglycemia is that bad. Or if your gallbladder is that junked up that you've got to do gallbladder cleanse strategy before you uh, start doing a keto or a high fat carnivore diet. Now, keto is great because I said, like I said, you get the diversity of food, you get the diversity of nutrients, and then you get the, the, the fiber, right? Not to poop, but for the diamine oxidase and methyl transfer ACE. Okay? That's why we have it. Now, um, and for the even energy, so it gives you mental clarity to being in state of ketosis, highly adapted. Uh, you are so strong at the gym. It's amazeballs. Um, you get fat into the dermis layers, collagen preserved, preferred. You have cholesterol for your reproductive hormones. Uh, you balance out your energy systems like your adrenal and your thyroid system. Uh, you get the fat soluble vitamins from it. It's just win all the way across the board. I mean, being in a state of ketosis, it's great for, uh, to heal the gut, for diabetes, for, you know, depression or reproductive issues, uh, depression, you know, mental disorders, Alzheimer's, dementia, freaking depression. It's amazing. And that's the reason why I chose to do and choose to do a keto omnivore plant and fat and protein dietary lifestyle forever now if we're talking um our carnivore people now if you guys go and check i still need to put them in a playlist i am such a bad freaking social media person um if you look, watch some of my interviews, you'll see people who really struggle with carnivore. But before I go into that, let's go into the benefits of doing carnivore. Well, if you do it for the short term, the benefits of doing carnivore are, uh, oh, thank you, Mary. The benefits of doing carnivore is the fact that if you have a bunch of inflammation from developing leaky gut and a histamine intolerance, and now you're very reactive to plants, it's amazing to go and eat an all animal foods diet, right? When you make it a ketotic version, stop eating so much damn protein, then you also experience the benefits of being in a state of ketosis, the same thing as keto omnivore. So essentially it's a keto diet, it's just a carnivore version of it, or as people call it, a keto vor. Um, that is in an, in an, in an, uh, in and of itself an amazing thing um, that's really great about carnivore amazing and you a lot of people who do carnivore sort of become a little bit more connected to uh, like primal living essentially like the way our hunter-gatherers lived uh, people who begin to homestead and people who talk that way or people who are hunting and things of this nature and they'll find that sort of primal existence when they follow a carnivore reality and people are eating like raw meat and all that all right don't forget you guys to like up the stream we got almost 100 people in the house and only 32 likes i do not check to see who's liking up the stream i never have but it helps bring people to my very humble channel and uh, you do it by clicking into the chat and then you pop out of the chat and hit the thumbs and come back in but uh Yes, I re would really appreciate it if you guys would like up the stream. And it is a humble channel, even though I don't sound humble. I'm 55 now. Girlfriend has been humbled by the difficulties of life. Okay? <laughs> it, it may not seem that I'm not humble, but trust, I'm very humbled by everything. Or I wouldn't have, like, moved a horse from California to Tennessee with a bunch of middle stuff in Texas where I had my ass kicked.
Thank you, Anna369. I mean, I am. When you're on a live stream, it's so sub subjective. I mean, I don't know how to talk professional. I mean, I could try, but it feels so stupid. <laughs> like, well, here's my whiteboard. Let's just go through all of the, you know, let, let's do the, uh, what is it? And Pia, I have the, um, the script ready to do, like with your whiteboard and you got the script. I don't do that. I just go on the fly. Now, those are the good things about all three diets, uh, Anna. So we like it. I promise you we're going to go through all of this stuff and the thing with my glio, the glio, my mom, surely that's a, the most aggressive brain cancer that, that exists. I will go into that in a minute. All right. Now I want to talk about the bad and ugly. Okay. We're going to the bad and then we go, we're going into the uglai. We're going beyond ugly, honey. We're going into the uglais. Okay. Oh God. Do I act like this in person? Sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time I don't. Do I act like this in consultations? Definitely not. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Okay. Let's hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Okay. The bad things that I don't like about this diet, because I'm going to talk about the ugly, because there's an ugly, there is a you glass side of this stuff. Okay. Fiends, you have the ecliga cedar of Dan Dan Har diets. This man say, yeah. No, avocado doesn't fill any glycogen. Okay, I'll get to that. So, um, you cannot use avocado for your carbs. Sorry, people. I know it has 13 grams of carbohydrates, but the fat and fiber slow it down. I'll go into that later. Um, the bad side is the fact that you must stick to your electrolytes on a level that I'm not playing people. I am not joking with this stuff. You can hurt yourself. It is not good if you hurt yourself by experiencing an electrolyte imbalance. So I'm going to kind of explain what that would look like. Okay. Y'all ready for this? Well, since your magnesium, uh, influences 300 enzymatic responses that ultimately affect your hormones, you can fuck up your hormones by not taking enough magnesium. Legit. That is how I start to develop melasma. Got rid of that stuff. But I, yes. What was it? Four or five years ago? It looked like somebody, well, somebody said in one of my videos, it looked like a baboon shat diarrhea on my face. Legit, somebody wrote that in the comment section on my video. And that's when I was trying to be like, I'm not superficial at all. I mean, I live in Hollywood, but I'm not superficial. So I'm going to ignore that I'm getting this really dark, splotchy things all over my face. I'm just going to ignore it. I just tried, I tried to ignore it. I tried to be grateful for being healthy and happy and alive. And, and it got so bad to where I remember one person, I don't remember who the person was, but they're like, you have melasma. And I was like, I, I said, no, I don't. But what's that? <laughs> I don't have it. But what is that? What is it? <laughs> Oh God, it was so bad. And I was using a infrared box like that infrared because I got Juve as my sponsor and I was putting that shite like two inches from my face and it was like hyperpigmenting by the day. It, my skin got so bad, like words cannot explain how bad my skin got. Not the texture or anything. It was a hyperpigmentation of my skin was and it really just affected my face and it destroyed my face like destroyed it like like one of the worst cases of melasma i've ever seen so but for my skin to look like this is almost a damn near miracle mm. lord have mercy child now i would be preaching electrolytes and not on it myself i was traveling a lot and like i wasn't taking things and i wasn't taking my magnesium i was doing videos telling everybody to take it that's why i know influencers lie oh, 
because I'm as real as fuck and even I wasn't saying some stuff. Let me get some water here. Tea time. Ooh, if I could dish the tea. Honey. But that is not like me. I'm too old to dish the tea. <laughs> okay. Magnesium is so important. It's really bad if you don't get enough magnesium. And the reason why I mentioned glycinate is because it's the most absorbable. It's quickly absorbed and it affects your central nervous system. And that is very important when you're dealing, again, with hormone, hormonal systems and organs, right? Like your adrenal system and your adrenal glands you really need in your thyroid and the hormones that it produces. You really need magnesium on a level I can't explain. But the worst, the most deadly part of not taking enough magnesium on a keto or carnivore diet, or dare I even say low carb, right fat, or dare I even say sad, sad diet, but really the low carb diets, is that you could have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Don't play with your magnesium. Do any of the gurus talk about taking a carnivore diet? Don't even like get me started. That you could have a heart attack? Do they tell you that when they're telling you to eat all that meat and get your electrolytes from the freaking meat? Do they tell you you can have a heart attack? No, they don't tell you that. They don't tell you that. This is the good, the bad, and the ugly. So it's really bad not to get enough magnesium. Chelated magnesium is the best, but the problem with glycinate for some reason, which I gotta go do more of the deep dive. Thank you, KG, for donating to the Super Chat. All donations will go towards my fur babies. Because I moved to raw land with nothing on it. And if y'all think I'm rich, then I, if I was rich, I would not be living in an RV camper. Okay. It's freezing in the morning. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. And we haven't even hit winter. I'm a little scared. All the controversy on the diets turns people off. I think that people love it though. I think people feed on, there are certain people where it turns it off, them off. And then sometimes people are like, ooh, the dish. Like that's the reason why I binge watched all those vegan diets like eight years ago. It was hilarious. Like Harley, Freely the Banana Girl. Like that stuff was straight up where the popcorn. Where the thymus popcorn. Mm, that was some dish, right? Oh my God, those were, f the, I mean, I, I mean, you I watched the vegan cheetah, like he was straight up friggin' good television. Oh, okay. And I mean, then I was also very fascinated on the de deterioration of people's bodies on those diets and, and, and whatever. So another bad thing besides the magnesium is the potassium, which also affects your heart. Um, potassium and salt must be working together like teeter tottering. You go into the cell, then it goes out of the cell, and it goes back into the cell, and then it goes out of the cell. Do, 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 do. It goes like this. And if it's not doing that, because you have too much salt in your diet or too little salt, one depletes the other if they're not in balance. Yes. So if you don't take enough salt, then your body holds on to salt, it depletes your potassium. So we have to be very, 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 very careful to not oversalt our food. Now, Steve Foley, Finney, and Jeff Volick in the very beginning, and these guys are doctors, yo. Yo. I said that like a Hollywood girl, right? I got, I'm in the South now. <laughs> My neighbor in the, the Stephanie. <laughs> I know everybody. I'm trying to get like the white southern accent and the black southern accent. Chad, what you talking about? We just want to go to the south. Anyway, let's get back to it. So, um, <laughs> um, no, there, there's like, what does my electrician say? He says, <laughs> they're going to have a come apart. If that keeps happening, they're going to have a come apart. Like, lose it, come apart. So, excuse me, my well, my vocabulary changes. LMNT is garbage. Bunch of chlorides. Burn it. All right. Sorry, LMNT. 
But Steph's got to keep it real. <laughs> All right. So the ugly part is the potassium. The people aren't are not getting enough potassium. They're not getting enough of the the right kind of salt, which would be Redmond's is a great one. Celtic or Celtic sea salt is a great one. A Himalayan salt, which is really the best if you can get one that doesn't have metal chips in it from the machine that breaks down the cell. Um, so another, so Tennessee, my son is down there. I want to move there too. Yeah, it's pretty bomb. It's bomb, yo. Y'all see my people, my, my videos, like going from Hollywood. It was so freaking disgusting. Oh my God. I live right in the middle of Hollywood, California. I'm not even going to lie. Okay. So the thing that's bad is that people don't balance them. They either do, mostly they people do too much salt, especially on carnivore because they're like, oh my God, it tastes so good. Um, so if you don't have enough salt on keto or carnivore, you can really create some damage to the heart. The earth, the sense, yeah. And so you don't want to do it damage the, 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 the heart. And um, people start to develop other secondary issues, chronic nausea. And people don't know the difference between a gallbladder nausea and uh, an adrenal. Like there's, there's hypoglycemia, there's gallbladder, and then there's also electrolyte nausea. We just feel like, mm. Yeah, you feel really kind of like grossed out sometimes when you don't manage your electrolytes. Legit. So your potassium can come in the form of uh, obviously seafood, uh, oysters. Um, they come in the, the form of meats. All the meats have potassium. Like your chicken and your beef and your red meats have potassium. Thank you, Fino. Thank you. Uh, for the horse babies, thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate it. Um, so, uh, you really, you can get it, avocado's great, but a lot of people have an allergy response to the avocado and to uh, the latex gloves and the latex trees, where you get that rubber from. Some people actually have, like, or beyond having a leak, you get to actually have an allergy to avocados, and no matter how much, they try to titrate titrate up they cannot but that's very small percent of the society probably like one or two percent if that mostly people have developed a sensitivity to the avocado because of a leaking gut wall not because they have a legit allergy to it um other foods um i mean your cruciferous vegetables have potassium in it Low amounts, a cup like has like 70 grams in it, uh, which if you're doing a keto uh, omnivore diet, you can still get that potassium in your meat and your vegetables and to get that potassium number up, which is very, very important. Now, typically people can just have an avocado a day, like a Haas size avocado, and that suffices from about 350 to about 700 milligrams of potassium. Now, people will talk about 4,700 milligrams of potassium. I have done the math. You would have to eat, I don't know, 10 avocados to get that or like five buckets of greens. So whoever said you needed 4,700 milligrams of potassium, how? How are you going to get that in meat and food? Like that you cannot without overeating. Like it's impossible. So I believe that, that that number is wrong. And because of all the people and thousands of people I've coached over the years, uh, they seem to do perfectly fine on one avocado a day plus the cruciferous vegetables plus what's in meat. You can also do meat broth, not a bone broth, a meat broth to liberate the potassium in the water. Spinach has a lot, but we all in a spinach has so many oxalates, so you run into that problem. Okay. Don't forget to like up the stream, guys. We got 145 people in the live and only 80 likes, and I don't check to see who's gonna like up the stream, and I promise I'm going to go through all your questions in a second. But people on the replay always get freaked out that I talk to my people. Y'all, my people in the lives. Okay. Uh, other bad things about these diets. And I would never say that not having the diversity of starch and sugars is bad. I don't. I don't see that as bad. I actually see it as good. Uh, the only thing that sucks is that when you travel or you're working a job, you actually must absolutely unequivocally prepare food all the time 
you must prepare food so that you've got it because you can't eat the nuts like those are just demineralize you can't eat the nuts with the phytic acid and the mold and y'all got histamine problems trying to eat them damn nuts uh-uh nuts and seeds and people ask me about chia i'm like nope chia is so bad that stuff turns into cement in your body it just thickens and congeals in your stomach no macadamia nuts are the only ones that i say are kind of quasi okay meat broth not bone broth ah hi from tokyo ultraman okay um i'm trying to think of other bad things i'm running out of bad things for keto hmm oh uh hypoglycemia if you don't adapt if you're not adapting it can do some issues with your hormones yes if you don't adapt to any of these diets you can jack up your thyroid, you can jack up your adrenal system, you can jack up, jack up your sex hormonal system, you can hypoglycemia is a bad thing. That's a bad thing. If you have an underlying gallbladder problem, know your existing health before doing any of these diets and trying to to up your fat because if you have an underlying gallbladder problem you try to stuff a bunch of fat down that's the bad side of doing these diets it's not the diet that's bad it's your existing health that's the problem it's the same people same same people who've got insulin resistance they can't regulate their blood sugar and then they do one of these low carb diets keto or carnivore and then their hypoglycemia just goes it gets really bad and then that's a problem because then people start to have fertility issues and reproductive hormonal issues and men's testosterone tank, testosterone tanks. And so this, this would be the bad sides of these diets. Yes. Yeah. The, the, if you don't have enough of your electrolytes in, you have to be on top of it. You can start to develop heart issues over years and years. And that doesn't happen right away. You know, it, 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 it doesn't happen like this. It happens over time. Um, the hypoglycemia, the, uh, people who are doing carnivore who are eating so much red meat start to develop issues with not developing too much iron, too much iron in the system. And, uh, that's really bad, especially all who've got leaky gut and you don't absorb iron very well. You have to be very, very careful with the iron from red meat. And the the our, carnivore is awful with the bad stuff, like the lack of diversity, with the lack of fiber, not for pooping, but for other things, the lack of minerals that you're going to get from foods. Um, people uh, um, start to just develop other issues beyond electrolyte imbalances. They start to develop gout problems, kidney problems. They start to develop diarrhea, constipation bloatedness um people have a difficulty sleeping when they do carnivore um people develop gallbladder issues because they're eating too much too many ribeyes they're not eating enough fat and the cholesterol backs up into the gallbladder like legit some people are still eating like fish and and shrimp and all this meat that doesn't have enough fat on it when they're doing carnivore and then they start to develop a gallbladder problem doing carnivore it's underlying but it comes out these are the bad things right now I'm gonna talk about the ugly stuff and then I'm gonna go back to the good stuff go back to the good stuff the ugly stuff about these diets is the lies and the bullshit that you guys keep hearing online that's what's ugly okay and if I piss off other gurus good I'm doing something right because these people, not all of them, and some of them have like really good nuggets of information. Uh, but yep, yep, Ultraman says, yep, I was so bloated on carnivore. I thought that was supposed to take away the bloat. See, people need to like, the gurus who tell you to probably have uric acid, Ultraman, <laughs> um, that's not the bloat. That's a digestive issue. Uric acid is going to affect more of the, the, the biliary duct system. But if anybody tells you on keto or carnivore, right, this is the ugly side of these diets. If anybody tells you, like, the keto products, oh, my God. Like, 
I love Keto Connect. I'm not. I'm, I'm going to call them out a little bit. I love them. They did an interview with me years ago, but I heard that the that one of them uh, developed kidney failure. Kidney failure also is a bad thing. That if you guys are so dehydrated, trying to stuff all that meat through your shite, develop kidney disease from doing a carnivore diet or even keto. Um, so they're sweet couple, but I heard, and I could be wrong. Um, like I hear a lot of stuff through the grapevine. That's the ugly side, right? This stuff with Jimmy Moore, ugly. Um, I'm not going to call out any more names, but, um, the stuff that we hear is unrealistic. If anything looks easy, run. Nothing in life is easy. Psyllium husk is horrible for your habitual lion stepper. No, burn the psyllium husk. It's so bad for your colon. It's like glass. Just cuts and cuts it like a knife. Um, so the ugly part is eat as much meat as possible. Or now people are saying eat high fat, but they don't tell you how much, right? And then people get the numbers of protein wrong. Oh, between 45 and 60. First of all, that's for women. And that was my old number because I evolve, right? Now I'm going up to 70, depending on the woman. Like me, I live like a freaking beast in the gym. I'm 55. I live like a beast. When I go in there, I am not playing in the freaking gym. Now I am in the country, but when I go in there, and I'm like, all right, boys, step aside. The queen is here and we're going to get it done. We're going to get it in. So my protein allotment is raised a bit. I also have developed good GLUT4 receptor sites to gobble up all the glucose so I can stay in a state of ketosis. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's another thing that's, that's a bad thing. If you're working out and you don't produce ketones, oh my goodness, y'all can hurt yourself. And cardio, mm, y'all can hurt yourself. Do not do cardio and hit training or any of that stuff when you're not adapted. Uh, thank you, Melanie. Uh, so it's very, the ugly side is literally what I don't like that you guys are, I, the reason why I get pissed, I don't know if I get pissed, I get super annoyed. I do all these consultations and people will do stuff that's literally hurting them. And I'm like, why are you fasting? Why, why are you fasting? Fasting is the dumbest thing ever trending because we are not hunter gatherers. No, we're not. We are jacked up modern humans with jacked up freaking microbiome and jacked up a lot of stuff and bills, bills, pay my bills. <laughs> we don't live our lives. Like we don't rest and digest ever. And so, you know, you'll take these trending things on like, Dr. Fung was like doing his book thing and making his money at that time. And people would just come at me hard and I, I wouldn't budge. I'm like, he's the only one I'm going to call out hard. Like, what are you doing, bro? You're like literally legit hurting people with this stupid freaking trend. And then all these gurus jumped on it and started talking about autophagy. What a joke. What a joke. Now everybody's like, yeah, I jacked myself up. I lost 60 pounds and then my, you know, and then these people start developing secondary things like a loss of collagen and adrenal system and thyroid issues. And, uh, it's so funny. Yeah. And so, so the fasting is never appropriate. Did I say that? No, I didn't say that. If I'll if I want to say it's not appropriate ever in any context, then I will say that. What I would, what I'm saying is that the fasting trend, that's a big difference than saying fasting is not good ever period done zero at all. Never. Uh, I said the fasting trend. God, I'm hyper today, but I'm still in a good mood. If you guys are having a severe allergy attack. Okay. Severe eczema, severe swelling. A 24 hour fast is great. One time. Okay. Bloping and burping under carnivore. You're hypochlorhydric. Uh, hypochlorhydria. I 
I promise I'm Eric. I'm going to get to you in a sec. Okay. Um, the, uh, yeah, the ugly side is the mis misinformed. I hate that expression. Misinfo, infoed. How about that? Uh, misinfoed people that people are getting hurt and, you know, you'll, and, and I mean, a lot of people, they, they don't have any ill will. It's not like I'm attacking their character, but it's the fact that when you speak to an audience, people will just literally follow everything you say. That's a lot of power. Ah, uh, baddest friend. Hey, talk for so much, bro. I'm from a whole Talk so much, much. Are you Swedish? Or are you Norsk or Dansk? Men, you think that you are Swedish? Where come you from? In Sverige. All right, here we go. Yes, I lived in Sweden, people. Okay, thank you, Courtney Tyree Jones. Love that. <laughs> I know they were like, they were at the tractor supply and I got one hat. It fits my head the right way. So I bought them in every color. That's just what I do. It's the same thing with Pumas. I only wear Puma sports shoes. Anyway. Um, so that's the ugly side of these trending diets that I want to fail is that people will follow gurus and then they'll injure themselves. Like everybody's going to respond different. I don't care if your neighbor's cousin's boyfriend's uh, little niece had did great on fasting or carnivore. You ain't that person. And everybody responds differently to these diets based on the fact that we have different types of damage. Histamine, everybody reacts different to different histamine types. Like you know, we have histamine in food. We have our mast cells react to food as histamine. And we need certain nutrients to make these anti natural antihistamine enzymes that will break down the histamine. And everybody reacts differently, like to the eggs and to the butter and to the cinnamon, to the greens and to, you know, to the aged meats. And meat. people don't know what aged meats are, like bacon and, and beef jerky and salami and, and meat that's like in the refrigerator too many days and um, and butters and dairies and everybody's different and citrus. There's so many high histamine foods. And so, you know, we can't broad stroke things. People have to find out individually where their body stands. Like there's different types of hypoglycemia. There's reactive hypoglycemia. Dr. Fung is an actual doctor. Right. All these doctors, not all of them are full of shite. When money's involved, okay, first of all, um, there's a lot of lovely doctors out there that I have a lot of respect for, like uh, Dr. Uh, Berg. No, he's a chiropractor, but he's still a doctor. Uh, Dr. Barry, right? There's, I mean, he's a, he's a sweetheart. He really is. You know, he's a sweet guy. He's He, he wished me happy birthday and called me dear friend. <laughs> um... I mean, we have each other's numbers. We spoke to each other privately before, but I don't agree with his uh, carnivore philosophy. Some of it I do, and a lot of it I don't. Um, he's a doctor. He's not, you know, I'm not calling him a quack. He's a doctor. He's no more, he's no more or less of a doctor than Dr. Fung. Okay. Uh, uh, what Saladino's a doctor. He's got his PhD. Okay. He's also a guru. And Dr. Fung is another person making cheddar. He's making money up the freaking wazoo. He's not a scientist. You can't call these people scientists. All these people have opinions. Doctors aren't scientists. You are tripping. If that were so, look at the world today. Look at the world today. What a freaking joke, right? Doctors are like, oh, oh my, you know how many women have their uteruses taken out because the doctor's like, oh my God, you have fibro. Let's just take out your uterus. Oh, you have. Like one cancer cell, let's take out your freaking uterus. Oh, you have endometriosis, let's take out your uterus. Oh, you have, um, uh, your gallbladder has like two small stones. Let's take out your gallbladder. These are doctors taking out people's organs. People having prolapsing, prolapsing and all this kind of shit. Come on now. This is where I sound so sarcastic and the one person feels so bullied by me and beat up. <laughs> Um, 
Thank you, Ultraman. So when you're saying that doctors are scientific, that's the biggest joke I've ever heard in my life. They are so unscientific. They go and they memorize shite in freaking universities. And then they go and are indoctrinated by systems that don't look outside the box. Trust me, my mom's oncologist was a doctor who told her not to stop eating garbage. Like, didn't consider it it at all. A lot of oncologists, what about dietitians? Well, they're not doctors. Telling you to eat crackers and orange juice when you're diabetic. The the medical community is a freaking, (laughs) it's a yoke. Yeah, it is. So, uh uh-uh, we we ain't doing doctors or scientists garbage. We should know better in 2022 with the world being upside down the last two and a half years. We should know better. (laughs) That's ridiculous. You know, I used to work as a photographer for a long time. If you all, if y'all saw, uh, (laughs) never said all doctors, I feel the majority of them are hurting more than helping, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, if you guys saw like my old place, I had all my photography on the wall and people would always be like, so who did you study? Like, who's your, like, would you, what, what techniques? I was like, what you talking about Willis? I didn't study under no one because I knew that once I started studying photography techniques, I would be an indoctrinated to sit and, and photograph in that way that you're taught to photograph. So I didn't, I just taught myself. And then I had more freedom because there was like, well, you can't do that. You're not supposed to do that in photography. So sometimes, you know, the medical community, there is really some great things about it, like the emergency med- medicine. And there are really some great doctors. But just like doctors, there's like teachers and some teachers suck so bad. You're in, when you go through school in your formative years and you like don't remember a single teacher that actually get, really taught you anything. And then there's like the one that did. So y'all from Sveria, you are a nurse. You're very knowledgeable. Thank you for that from Sveria. Nej, jag är inte en uh, läkare. No, that's play. Läkare. Can't remember. Can't remember nurse. I just said doctor in Swedish. Um, so that's the ugly side of this. Yeah, and I think a lot of people who are gurus or even doctors who preach stuff, they don't actually know what happens to a lot of people. Like, I remember, I'll never ever forget the interview with um, Ben Greenfield, the uh, the ultra marathoner, and Dr. Fung. I'll never forget, that's when I was like, this dude is a total fake. Uh, he said um, to um, Ben, he's like, kids, the kids are super connected to, you know, their circadian rhythm tells them that to not be hungry in the morning. And, you, you know, kids, if you look at children, they're not hungry at all in the morning. And Ben says, hmm, my kids wake me up at five o'clock in the morning going, daddy, I'm hungry. <laughs> like, you can't make this shit up. Like, busted. Dr. Fung was so busted in a live, we're going inter- to not live interview. Oh, my God. That shite was so funny. I was like, yep. Yeah. Yeah don't listen to the dude but like him he's me he made money that dude made some coins right but other ones i think are really naive the other ones i think really when they push for stuff i think they really think it's great but if you actually go through all the thousands of people and people i've had consultations are showing up in my live streams they will tell you they will tell you that i sit there with a notebook and i write down every freaking thing they say right? Because it helps me memorize and helps me associate what that like to stay there and stay present with someone to understand what their individual problem is. Because you just keep hearing like, I got this, I got that, I got this, I got that, I got this, I got that. And you can be like, "Mm -hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, well, let me just pull out my generic diet and just give it to you. No, I'm like, okay, I go, give me a, give me a backstory. Give me the history. And they'll be like, should I start when I was in my mother's belly? I said, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. How'd your mother eat? How'd your father eat? Right? What's that epigenetics? When you were born, were you breastfed? Were you vaginally birthed? Were you a C-section baby? All that shite matters. Have you had one antibiotic in your entire life? And if people aren't talking to you like that, they ain't scientists, okay? If your doctors aren't going and asking those deep questions, and my mom's oncologist is not asking about 
what she ate to, to, to develop a deadly cancer, then don't listen to that person. You got crumbs. You have nuggets of information and the rest is like, whatever. Okay, now I'm going to answer you guys this. No, no. And ultimately, at the end of the day, these diets can be amazing. Now, you guys know I'm 55 and people are like, oh my God, but you're black and that's why you look young. No. Mm -mm. I don't even put my mom on camera anymore. My mom looks so bad. My mom is, she's not doing keto. She's not, she's just eating the standard American diet. And it's gotten worse since two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When people told her to stay inside. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she believed that. And so it completely destroyed her. Plus the Pokemon dance. That destroyed her too. Yep. Pokemon. Yep. Twice. Yep. That, that's when her, her body, she, she's not going to last much longer. I just watched her age in two years on a level. I, I mean, you, you can't even make this stuff up. So you can see how pissed off I am about that crap. Um, but the good thing is if she hadn't, if she had stayed on the diet, then she would, as a black woman and she dark skinned too, she would look amazing. My mom used to look so young. Not now. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. She listened too much, too, too much to what the, the people with the white coats in H. Patols told her to do. And it jacked her up. Um, but had she stayed on it and had she never eaten this way, she would be incredibly healthy and she'd still look young. And what, I've, I've said this story many times. I think it was in my late 30s and my mom pokes me on the chest and she goes your chest is aging and I was like no it's not she goes yeah you got wrinkles on your chest and I was noticing it went on keto all that went away honey child gone gone so black people do age white people y'all don't know we age mm -hmm. we have saggy jowls. We have age. We get wrinkles. We don't get it like white skin, people who don't have enough melanin, but we still get it. And if you don't take care of yourself, you will still have hanging jowls. All right. Now, so the benefits are just the sustained energy, the ability to keep your hormones because your sex hormones are made out of cholesterol. So when you're eating animal fat, and do not listen to this cholesterol myth. People are like, do I do a cholesterol panel? I'm like, no, 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 please don't. Please don't do a cholesterol panel. Please do a calcium score if you're worried and your blood pressure. Those are the two main things you should worry about. All right, let's, let's go back because y'all are hitting up with the comments here. Um, I'm going to go through all your guys' questions and I'm, people on the replay, now it's answer questions time. Oh, you guys are coming at me hard. Do you put electrolytes in every glass of water through the day? No, I eat an avocado one day. I split it up or I'll have two. The carbs don't count because the fat and fiber will slow down the rate at which the food is digested and glucose hits the bloodstream. Uh, I have salt throughout the day. That's my next one. I try to get my electrolytes from food mostly. The only thing I supplement is my magnesium. I do a spray transdermal and I do an oral glycinate and malate. Not at the same time, but I alternate. Um, I take 400 milligrams of magnesium in the evening to affect my central nervous system. And I do chlorides twice a day, morning and evening. Uh, potassium is the avocado. If you're taking potassium citrate, it's 400, 200 morning, 200 evening of potassium citrate. LMNT has too much, too many chlorides in it. It's another company trying to make money. Burn your LMNT. Sorry, guys. I know you guys probably hate me, but if everybody loves, loves you, you're doing something wrong. Because if everybody loves you, you ain't, you ain't honest. Uh, I do not understand why they are not talking about electrolytes, uh, Jan. I don't understand either. Uh, let me see. Maria says, preach, girl. Psyllium husk, like I said, is very dangerous. Do you only use glycinate? Nope, malate too. And uh, transdermal uh, chloride magnesium because it's so little chloride 
that it absorbs through the skin and it doesn't affect your biliary duct system like an oral chloride is terrible. Um, so I can eat two tablespoons of Kerrygold butter throughout the day till I get to 200. Yeah. Eggs for breakfast. If you don't have an egg allergy, avocado may be revived for dinner with maybe broccoli. Yes. We're not saying the amounts though. And the timing. And it, yeah, that all matters because you're a guy rich. Finally caught you live. Love your honesty to what T T to D. Huh? For four years. What is that? I don't know what that is. Sorry. Tried Carnivore. I guess that's, I don't know. Tried Carnivore for about three months. I felt good at first and then da, 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 not so great. Then I found your videos. You are the spot on for me. Okay, cool. Question. When people say I cured my diabetes on special diet, does the person need to stay on the diet to keep diabetes away? After? Okay. This is a great question. I love this question. It's very innocent and it's a good question. And I'll restate this. Jenna says, when people say I cured my diabetes on a special diet, does that person need to stay on the diet to keep the diabetes away and after going off meds? Over the long term, I, you say special diet that's kind of um, subjective. Do you have to stay on keto or carnivore to keep your diabetes at bay if you use keto to be ketotic? No. Uh, that's a whole nother long story on how you'd have, uh, had a blast closer to Austin, but it's too damn pricey now. Um, I just hate Texas. I just did. I mean, I might've had more fun. I don't know. I came from Hollywood, so it wasn't like, I wasn't looking for a city life. It was just flat and it was hot. I couldn't do it. I, aesthetically, I was like, oh my God, it's so ugly here. I'm sorry, Texas people. I did not find it aesthetically beautiful at all. If you take my old videos when I was in Texas looking out my window in the same RV in the same seat and you take the window now, like you can't even compare the beauty and the clean air. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Well, stuff. Second time to catch you live. Cool. Will eating avocado achieve glycogen storage? No. Uh, you are gorgeous. I could turn 67 on Sunday, but feeling young. I feel young. Awesome. How long has your mom lived with her glio? My mom's had her glio for over 15 years now. Um, be you, we like it. You are humble. Your skin is gorgeous. How do you know if when you're in ketosis? That's a good question. So you know that you're in ketosis when your energy is very even. You don't have deeps. You don't have hypoglycemia. You don't need to take a nap. Your brain is on freaking fire. Legit. Motility. You can poop. Uh, you feel good. Your hormones balance. You sleep well. Uh, hello. How much protein should I eat a day before I affect the liver? That's a strange question. Are you, were you Swedish? I can't remember. Um, everybody's different. First of all, I don't know if you're male or female, so male or female. I can't even answer that question. How do you get, how do you not get skinny fat? I work out an hour and a half. No, an hour or five days a week for... This is a great question, too. Let me read this. Give you mustard. I've got a gnat in here. The gnat's here for real. They go up my nose. They go up my ear. I'm like, ugh. Um, how do you... How do you... Well, she's framing it kind of strange, but... How do you get not skinny fat? I work out one hour, five days a week for over a year, and I am still skinny fat. I think I might... Uh, I might under eat... Um, Five foot seven and usually eat 200, 2,000 calories a day. I eat till I'm satisfied. Help! Okay, this is a great question for those who are watching. Um, this person says, I've been working out for a year, five days a week, and I'm still skinny fat. I love this question, by the way. So, um, your body gains muscle through a couple different ways. So let, let's check it out. Exercise is one component of growing muscle. Um, you have to also balance your insulin. Your insulin is that little lovely but dick hormone. It's kind of a jerk off, right? That hormone, unfortunately, um, 
if your insulin, if you're like eating carbs and skipping meals and doing that scientific Dr. Fung, I'm sorry, I'm just being silly. Don't take me personal. Who made that comment? I don't even know who it is. Please don't be pissed. Um, if you take the science of Dr. Fung and you just skip your breakfast and you fast all night and keep fasting and you've already got hypoglycemia, but you're not aware of it. And uh, your body will start breaking down proteins in the body to convert into glucose to then give you enough energy. And if you do this enough, it starts to jack up your, your uh, immune system when you keep fasting. And then all of a sudden, your blood sugar starts to invert. It starts to rebound, right? Your insulin becomes more resistant. You start storing more fat out of muscle, legit, because your body can start converting muscle into sugar in minutes, right, when you're fasting. And then when you exercise on top of that body, the body goes more into a stress response. It's in a fight or flight response. And, and then um, your body keeps converting things into glucose, which then spikes your insulin. Then you start to store fat. And then you're eating up your muscle because your body needs it as energy, right? So a lot of people are working out. They're not eating right. Their body keeps breaking down amino acids in the body. And so you're burning through muscle but you're trying to gain muscle and muscle burns fat at rest. But because you're burning through muscle, you're not building muscle, which means you can't burn the fat. And then your insulin starts to get a little resistant and you start storing because it starts to secrete too much. Blood sugar's unstable and then you don't get sleep well at night and then your insulin's more resistant the next day, but you're not eating a lot of food and you're exercising. And then the fat cells keep telling you to store more fat and then you can't poop and estrogen starts getting stored into the liver and then it keeps recirculating in the bloodstream to keeps telling you to store fat even though you're not fat but you're flabby because you keep eating through muscle and then you keep storing fat but you're not eating a lot of food so you're not getting big in size you just keep storing fat while your muscles shrivel up so the girth of an arm stays small but it's made up of mushiness of fat does that make sense or is that confusing does that make sense? If you have a gallbladder pain, it, wait, if gallbladder pain is tolerable, should I, should I push through it and eat high? No, 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 no. If you have gallbladder pain, which is like right side pain, middle of the stomach pain, you could have shoulder blade pain, you could feel nauseous or have some diarrhea when you eat fat, get bloated. Please do not push through it. <laughs> um, what you want to do is uh, make sure that you're always eating fat with protein. You want to eat your fat with food that slows down digestion, which is another thing with carnivore for those who've got a gallbladder issue. You're going to need that fiber, right? You're going to have to break down those amino, that, that fatty acids really slowly to not overwhelm the gallbladder that's not releasing enough bile because your biliary duct system ain't functioning properly. Cholesterol, excuse me, molecules get backed up into the gallbladder and it can't release. It cannot release the salts to meet, meet the fat in the small intestine. And so you feel sick. And that is not a good thing to feel sick or even dare I say, you know, trying to just keep pushing through something that can't break down the fat can make you sick. Now, um, you could use uh, enzymes to try to support the gallbladder that's backed up, uh, like ox bile or tutka or taurine or glycine or lemon water, uh, massaging the gallbladder, um, exercising will help release bile, um, eating fat uh, in small amounts. Um, will help with the, but small, it has to be very small. But if it's so bad, then you might need to do a cleanse. And cleanses are very careful. They're like, oh, you're supposed to lie on your right side while you're doing a cleanse. But if you cannot poop very well and you're mega constipated because you have a thyroid problem or, you know, candida's paralyzed peristalsis or ileocecal valve stuck and you lie on your right side doing that cleanse, yo, infection. Don't hurt yourself now trying to do no cleanses. Make sure that you can poop to do a cleanse.
But cleanses are great. Cleanses help get re release stones through the whole like liver, kidney, and gallbladder. Carnivore is very good for hydrogen, SIBO, not so much for methane. There's There was a study done on the subject. Oh, is that? Are you trying to be smart with me, carnivore lion? I need to leave a message back. It's been a minute. Bone broth is bad. Somebody's like, can you explain why bone, bone broth is bad? It's not bad. It has the potentials of being really bad. Number one, cows eat everything. They eat grass. They eat leaves. You see my horses are like, I was like, did you just eat a leaf off the ground that fell from the tree? <laughs> I mean, I've stayed on two cattle ranches and I just would watch them eat. They eat everything and they eat stuff that's high in oxalates. So that gets into the marrow. Now, when you're baking your marrow and you're eating the collagen and everything, that's a lot safer than liberating when you, when you, when you cook it, slow cook the bone marrow for hours and hours, then everything gets leached out into that water so you get a high concentration of oxalates and glutamate right which is neurospaz glutamate monosodium glutamate yes those are the two problems the third problem is those who've got high histamine issues that slow cooking thing is collecting tons of bacteria and that makes you guys a lot of you guys have a histamine reaction to the bone broth that's why so take your bones and you bake them and you eat the marrow that way do not do bone broth. Do meat broth. Tried carnivore because I have IBS. I'm trying to figure out which vegetables are causing my bowel issues. So you have to start very small, like literally like a teaspoon or a tablespoon. And then you got to wait to see if you have a reaction to that food. And you have to clear out everything. Like you've got a beyond gaps protocol. You have to do a freaking clean out of everything and then add one thing in at a time in at a time every three days. Well, hello, Carnivore Lion, who did an interview with me. You guys should go to his channel and check out his work. Uh, we've we, I need to we haven't talked in a hot minute, but we constantly talk about how carnivores become absolutely stupid now. And his title is Carnivore and he has, I got to interview him soon. He has a barrage of issues. So he was trying to educate us against the methane gas. And what was it? I forgot. It was the methane gas. So can I eat two tablespoons of Kerrygold? I'm going to go back to methane gas butter and throughout the day. So, okay. Uh, if you don't have a reaction to it. Okay. I think I'm going back too much. Everybody hit the like button. Okay, now I'm going to go, I'm going to put me towards the front now. The discovered potatoes are giving me, me boils. Yeah, no, it's super, uh, super histamine. Hit the like, guys. There's 200 people in the house, and I don't check to see who's liking, but it helps bring people to my channel. It's better, better than Tala for cooking. Oh, uh, yeah, I did a whole thing on this. Oh, my, my course. Oh, by the way, you guys, I have a course page. If you want to sign up for my course, go to stephanieperson.com and sign up. I cover all three diets. And uh, I went through, i got to have my notes. I have a bunch of notes on that. Um, so uh, even though it's very weird that olive oil, no, avocado oil has a higher heat point, smoke point, than all these animal fats. But the problem is it still oxidizes. So even though it's smoking later, it's still already rancidifying way more than an animal fat. So butter, ghee, ghee, clarified butter, ghee, is the best to cook with when it comes to uh, uh, um, reactive oxygen species, which is the oxidation of your fat. 12 hour fast, especially while you sleep. Is where it's at. That's why uh, Courtney says, Hey, Stephanie, what's up with higher blood sugar during periods? Oh, periods are just awful. <laughs> that is so normal, Liliana. So don't, don't trip. That's what's going to happen. It happens to, I'd say, 95% of the women that have periods doing keto. Uh, their blood sugar goes bananas. I mean, our hormones are so friggin' nutso. So that's normal. 
I suggest for people who've got no gallbladder to find an, the, the the body's very smart. It'll find another place to store um, uh, your bile salts because the liver's still producing bile in your piping, the duct system. Uh, you just literally got to make sure that your body's functioning properly and you're in a homeostatic, you're in homeostasis. And that's the sleeping at night and, you know, make sure that you're hydrating, you're getting enough fluids through your organs to be able to do this. Redmond's Real Light is the best. Him and Dr. Berg's, those two, I mean, those two are like, but what you guys don't do electrolyte products. You can get most of it from food. I'm just saying. I think they both use potassium citrate. I'm eating under 70 grams of protein and very high fat. Drink water and take magnesium. Still constipated. What else can I try? Okay, first of all, Maria, are you on carnivore? How long has this been going on? Are you doing keto diet? I need to know more. And if you're taking magnesium um, glycinate, that doesn't help you poop. It's got to be either citrate or I think it's citrate, oxide, and bicarbonate, I think. I think bicarbonate that helps you poop. Come apart. <laughs> I don't know. Well, she's going to have come apart. And I was just, I just laughed. Okay. Do you know Dr. Paul Mass, Mason or Mass? No. Would be great for you and he to have a discussion. He goes down the mechanisms of keto. I mean, I'd have to check him out. I've just become disillusioned by doctors. I like talking to real people at this juncture. But, I mean, I'll go check him out. I mean, you said he knows a lot of. What does he mean that this, that he knows? What, what do you mean by mechanisms? Like, what do you mean? Like, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? So everything you're saying, even if you're overweight and have fat to burn, your body will burn muscle and not fat. Lord, I have to be careful what you say. Y'all take what I'm saying too much. Your body burns muscle under stress. Your body burns muscle when you fast. Your body burns muscle when you're in the fight or flight system. Your body can all, everybody burns muscle all day long, just a little bit, right? Because we got to keep our blood sugar here. But when you start burning a lot of proteins, amino acids coming from skin, collagen, bone marrow, reproductive system, muscles, that's when it becomes a problem. That's the skinny fat question. That's what I was answering was the skinny fat question. My 18 month long period, for, oh my God, finally stopped. I had to add K1 supplement, but the increase in fat helped. One stick of butter a day, I'm full as hell, but I get it, get it done. Awesome, Fino. Do you only accept PayPal for your course subscription? Well, the problem is, is that it's where I have a subscription, right? So if people go more than one month, otherwise they have to go a month and then pay another month. Oh, they'll have to pay three months. Or you could go and pay through a Venmo, I think. Oh, I like to use Venmo. Um, uh, I, I like to just use PayPal because when I do my taxes at the end of the year, I don't have revenue streams from 20,000 different places. It's easier for me to do my taxes. But technically, I could do Venmo. Uh, do you only... Okay, read that. Do you not recommend fasting? Oh, r r fasting is a joke. It's a lie. It's all, they all lie. Ooh, especially one meal a day. I'm talking about fasting to lose weight or fasting for autophagy. There are people who fast because their al allergies are so gnarly. They, had, they need to stop eating what they're eating immediately, do a 24-hour fast to have their... Uh, CRP, C-reactive proteins, CRP, and their inflammation go down. Uh, hey, Steph, I'm going through some severe histamine dump every night. I'm struggling, been keeping my food log and cycling meats. Any suggestions? What? It's the same thing with the oxamine, oxal, oxamine. 
oxalate dumping effect, which is you have to, you can't just take all of it out. You have to have a little bit of those foods, um, small amounts. And I just wish I knew more. Like if I had a consultation with you or could speak to you, I could, I just don't have enough information. It's just too hard. Like, I don't know what you stopped eating. Um, I don't know if you were vegan before. I don't know if you have hypochlorhydria. I don't know if you've been diagnosed with SIBO, mast cell activity. I don't know. I don't know if you have antibiotics, if you're on any medications, SSRIs. I don't know. If you drink coffee, coffee is terrible too, by the way. Jasmine rice for, is best for carbs. It doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it, but it's really good for people who are trying to, to, to store glycogen to keep their blood sugar stable if they have hypoglycemia or gallbladder problem. Love your methods. I'm lactose intolerant. So what is a good source of calcium or calcium citrate supplements? So you have calcium in butter. There's no lactose in, in butter. You can also do fish bone calcium. There's a company called Calcia. I don't really like uh, to push companies, but K-A-L-S-I-O. Or you could take fish bones or you could take s sardines, eat the bones. Or you could take uh, uh, eggshells and pulverize them and sprinkle it on your food for the calcium which calcium also helps calcium magnesium zinc copper for histamine calcium for histamine for mast cell for the dao production and yeah melanie again i've been strict carnivore for a bit over 10 weeks i have coached I have coached through priming, lots of adjustments. I've gained 45 pounds. Good Lord, your Anthony, your electrolytes are off the chain. Oh my God. Mm, 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 mm. Your minerals are so jacked right now. You can eat avocados every day, as long as you don't have an allergy to them. I'm glad, Melanie says, I'm glad you got out of California. Yo, see, when I, when I, went, when I went to Texas, I was like, God, I, I just hated it in Texas. I'm sorry, Texas, Texans, I hated it. I absolutely hated Texas. Not the people, I just could not. Although I had bad experiences with uh, some of the people in the town I was in, that town. But I couldn't do it. I just, and then like, I never thought that I could live outside of my California. I mean, I used to live in Europe, but after coming back to the States, I was like, I was it. I was out California girl. Wish they all could be California. Now nobody's going to sing that song anymore, but, um, I just, I love the West topography. I love the landscape, but when I have animals, they ain't nothing better than having green grass. I thought in Tennessee, the rain would be so annoying, but it doesn't, it rains and then it goes away. It doesn't like rain day in and day out and day. It's not like Seattle. So now I'm really the only, there's only one thing I cannot stand about Tennessee. And that's about three months of humidity. Right now it's low humidity. This is the best time of year. I am loving it. It's like, I'm loving it so bad right now that I am freaking just counting the days to the next fall when I've actually got a house and I can relax and I meet some people and I got some friends in this town. We do some grilling and I can enjoy this freaking experience. Oh my God. With, with my dear me and my wild boar. Have I researched the metabolic theory of cancer? I have not researched the metabolic theory of cancer. I've just researched cancer and keto. Okay, EBW. Somebody said that, so she did not. That's why I said I wasn't sure. Okay, so the, the wife developed. So in Keto Connect, she developed. She did not develop kidney failure. She developed a bladder situation. 
interstitial, interstitial cystitis. The problem is, is that you, I told you all with doing any of these low carb diets, you have to be careful for the biliary duct system that's also connected to your bladder. Which is still connected. I'm, I'm sure she still had some kind of kidney issue if her, if she had this interstitial cystitis. That, that shouldn't bring up people's names if I don't know for a fact what happened. So, my bad. Uh, histamine under control. I actually did a video, like, two videos ago on how to, get, how to deal with histamine. Type 2 diabetic can do this. Oh, my God, Cherise, girlfriend. You spent all your money on me, honey. Thank you so much for donating to the Super Chat, guys. All the donations go towards the animals. Um... As you can see, I don't live a glamorous life, but I live a glamorous life of living in a clean, healthy 10 acres of beauty. All the donations go towards the animals. They don't go towards me. You see these gurus online, they got brand new cars and all that. No, 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 no. Somebody's like, you rich. I'm like, uh, I'm sorry. I had to crawl under my freaking truck and change my filter and crawl in my engine and change the pump myself to avoid the cost of going to a freaking mechanic. Uh, raw fat trimmings give me constipation, but cooked fat doesn't. Uh, I think, Tori, it might be the bacteria, which is creating a histamine response, which could be paralyzing the colon wall to contract i'm guessing and i keep saying hit the like button thank you you guys do you have any suggestions if a person naturally fasts for 16 hours but doesn't eat the best diet don't fast 16 hours number one unless you go to bed early uh well switching to keto diet help if you need to lose like 100 pounds Okay, this video, Miami, what's her name? Towna? Towny? Towny? I did this, I said, this video is the good, bad, and the ugly, so rewatch it. It's going to explain what is good, what is bad. If you guys don't know your existing health, you don't know if you have hypoglycemia and you try to do this diet, you can harm yourself, right? You, you, you don't want to harm yourself with chronic hypoglycemia. That was what I really forgot to focus on in the beginning. Hypoglycemia, thyroid, um... People who have gallbladder issues and aren't aware of it, are not aware of it. Thyroid issues and they're not aware of it and they try to do keto and they don't get enough fat and they're eating too much protein or, you know, they have low stomach acid and whatever. There's a lot of stuff that you have to consider like when doing carnivore. That's another thing that sucks is the kidney pain and then, and then I forgot to mention this in the beginning, the kidney issues, the chronic dehydration and um, uh, the trying to get purines and the the the, uh, the the protein waste products to the kidneys a lot of people don't know that they already are experiencing low kidney function a low GFR and then they try to do this diet you have to know existing health do you have any suggestions if a person naturally fat okay read that blah, 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 blah. so we watch this video you can join my course page there's a lot of information there oh my battery only has 15 percent which is fine I need to stop because I've been talking an hour and 23 minutes what kind of teas do you recommend? Rooibos, South African red tea, less tannins, rooibos, or make your own with fresh lemon or fresh turmeric. Uh, we're sprinkling hot water with two table tea, tablespoons of coconut oil and a teaspoon of coconut cream. No, don't do that. I know I talked about doing that before, and I might still have that on some of my meal plans. No. Do animal fat. Three tablespoons per meal if you're doing uh, a ketotic diet. Thanks for answering my question. You're welcome, Rich. What do, uh, now she goes soon? What do you eat besides meat and avocados? Uh, cruciferous ve vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, cabbage. Every once in a while, I might have, um, and I mean very rarely do I have tomatoes because I don't have a thyroid problem. It's nightshade, and y'all got thyroid problems? Cook your cruciferous vegetables. That's another problem you have to look out for. And I should have wrote, wrote a list because now I'm remembering some of the other problems that people have. 
cook your cruciferous vegetables if you have Hashimoto's hyper or hypothyroid, hypothyroid, thyroidism, or think you might. Do you have clients with bad tartar buildup on the back of the teeth? Yeah, of course. You, yes, of course. Oh, your tartar has been really bad because of keto. What are you doing? What kind of diet are you doing? By the way, for those who want consultations, you can go to my website and you in, and I think, I think almost all the slots are booked up. Tell me that you would like to be on a waiting list. If you are flexible with your consultation times and can do things the last minute, I can stick you in last minute, but I don't want my day to be too filled with consultations because I have too many things to do on this property, like get more fencing up. Like I've got to fix some things with the horses and I have to build a, a little barn off the side, lean to off the side of the pavilion. And I have to train the animals and I haven't been training the other two. So, uh, but if I can squeeze you guys in, I have a fixed schedule and I don't like to book six months out, out, in, out, in, out in advance. If I, something happens and there's an emergency, then I've taken your money, pre-taken your money. And then, and then I've got all these clients booked out six months. So I won't do that but I will have people pay as they go off calendar, right? Off calendar, you pay through PayPal and I'd squeeze you in like this time at this time. If you guys can do that, uh, email me through my website and, um, and uh, I can stick you in. But you gotta be patient in the, next, in the next 30, 40 days, within. How do you feel about telecapsules? They're okay if you're traveling. Uh, thanks, I only have half a thyroid and no gallbladder. You can still do it. You can still do everything. Um, bon, bonjour, bonsoir. Oh, but good evening. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, Stephanie. Would you, would you say, what would you say about dark chocolate? No. Oxalates and caffeine. No. Oh, and, and, um, so the caffeine makes your candida go crazy. And then the mold, the mycotoxins on the caffeine and the dark chocolate make your, make your, make you develop like systemic candida. Is it no? If, it, if you did it like four times a year, I'm not going to hate on you. Hi from Vancouver. Thank you so much for the information you're putting out. It has helped me so much. Thank you so much. DG, DGG. Uh, Courtney, do you use lotions or oils for your skin? Yes, I do um, a, a bunch. Shea butter, coconut oil, jojoba oil on my skin. Uh, I forgot how you say you're welcome in French. I'm starting to get tired. I feel it. My body's like, girl, stop. You've been going all freaking day long. Oh, my God. And I still have to finish some stuff. Uh, I have overactive bladder and have for years. I work, I work, wait, and have for years I work in the OR and can't drink much water. Oh, God, Lord have mercy. Much water during the day or I have to pee all day. Any suggestions? Hmm. Oh, Stephanie, was it? What's your last name? White bread. That's an interesting last name. Uh, Viet bread. Um, I really don't. I feel like I need to know more before I say something and, and mess. I don't want to hurt you in any kind of way. I need to. I can look up overactive bladder right now. Let's see. And I gotta mind my phone. Don't forget to like up this stream, guys. Here we come to save the day. Yeah, with the overactive bladder, I need to know about your blood sugar. That's a huge, huge problem. 
Here it says things like pelvic floor muscle exercises, which that makes sense, right? Yeah, pelvic floor. That's my advice. That's a safe advice I can give. Ooh, skip that one. Not skipped it, but like, ah, uh, thank you, Influence Positive. No question. Thank you so much. Appreciate the All the donations go towards my fur baby, so thank you, guys. Uh, they're all rescues, by the way. Okay. I was never trying to have no horses, y'all. Like, how did I end up with three? I was not trying. Well, two horses technically and a donkey. She's still into the equine family, but I was not trying. And then I was like, oh, especially my little pony. I was like, oh my God, he's going to die. If I don't rescue that little pony, he's going to die. He's got one eyeball. Oh, his navicular and his legs are all twisted. So, thank you so many. Good night. Good night, and I need to go too. I can't do keto without a gallbladder. Yes, you can. Of course, the, body, the liver still makes bile sauce, y'all. You can do tutka, lipase, tons of stuff. Yeah, get. I told you, get some sleep. Make sure that you're hydrated so your biliary duct system is working. Your body will find a new place to put those bile salts. Low protein and high fat on not losing any weight. Of course, it's, weight loss isn't about the diet, y'all. It's about your hormones. Laura, Laura, what's going on with your estrogen? What's going on with your insulin? What's going on with your thyroid hormone? Find out those things first. The, the, you can't just eat a diet and then like, voila, voila, I'm going to lose weight. It does not work that way. Your blood sugar could be high. I don't know how much fat you're eating. I don't know if you came from insulin resistance before. I don't know if you have a lot of cortisol going on in your life. I don't know if you got stress going on with your life. There's so many things. Inflammation, food sensitivities can make your blood sugar go Lack of sleep. I'll do a video of what I typically eat. Oh, Lord have mercy. I eat, especially right now, I'm eating a lot of thymus. Thank you, Jesus, for the thymus at my butcher. I'm eating a lot of pork. Oh, my God. Tons and tons of pork. Uh, beef, pork, liver, thymus, kidney, um, broccoli, uh, cabbage, when it doesn't make a mess all over my kitchen. Um, uh, yesterday at shrimp, I was craving shrimp, but I don't have it very often. At the bottom feeders. Uh, yeah. Melanie isn't, instead of Anthony, if my electrolytes are off the chain, what would be a protocol to get them back on? If your electrolytes are jacked, first of all, you have to do some dry brushing. You have to do some, uh, maybe get a rebounder to get your lymph fluid working, right? There's a problem with your lymphatic system. There's some issues going on there. You need to sleep properly. You need to get your cortisol down. That can make you swell. Your thyroid can make you swell. Your, you need to get like, I, I mentioned the electrolytes earlier. You just have to watch the replay. All right, guys, thank you so much for the live stream. I appreciate everybody who joined today. I wasn't expecting to go an hour and a half. I was like, oh, I'll go 45 minutes, but silly me, went for a long time. Um, I'm going to be doing more. Comment below. Tell me what more specifically you want me guys You want me guys to talk about. I thought I would do sort of a Q&A today and talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly so you guys can understand um, more. Uh uh, 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 yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Stephanie Ketogenic. My Facebook is Stephanie the Business, as in the body business from years ago. Uh, uh, Stephanie the Business Person. You can join my course page. I will be putting it on my website soon. I'm working on it now, but as you can see, I'm like running out of time. But I'm, I'm working on it to get it. It needs to go on my website. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, tell me what you, or right here, free content right here. I also have the course page, and I'm trying to think if you want to donate to my fur babies, you can go to my website. You can donate a dollar if you don't want to donate a dollar here. You can donate a dollar there. 
Um, I put up a donation. I never e-beg, but I'm e-begging only for the animals. I don't care about myself. Just for them to get everything that they need so they're safe on this property. Because the whole thing's not fenced, so I'm always worried about them getting out and getting onto the street. That's not a good look. Because the last... There used to be horses here before I bought the property, and I got hit by a car. One of them, and I do not do not want that to happen. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Hit the notification and all, so you can receive the notifications. And don't forget to share. There's that little thing that goes like that. Hit that and share it onto your other social media platforms, or just let people know that I'm here and that I've been around for years. Past all these gurus. Okay, I've been around, I'm like a dinosaur. I never went anywhere. I just got buried and shadowed banned. So now I'm not anymore. Now they're letting me out of YouTube jail. So I'm really happy about that. Anthony says, thanks a million for your wisdom and generosity of time and care. I appreciate you greatly. Thank you, everyone. I do really appreciate everybody joining this chat. I know I'm a spaz. I become a spaz on my live streams. I don't know why. I guess because I'm talking to myself. Um, I don't do this much talking in my day. I'm by myself most of the day. So it's very weird that when I do go live, I'm like, Bleh! <laughs> Oh my God. Broccoli is not toxic. They're all, they, it's a goitrogen, a goitrogen. They all have toxins and they all have good things. Right? You just got to go and try to eat more seasonally. And if you've got thyroid problems, cook your vegetables. Don't do anything raw. No, broccoli straight off the cuff is not toxic. It's really great when it comes to making dim out of it to balance your reproductive hormones. No, it's not all bad. I'm eating 250 grams of fat a day and about 100 grams of protein. I have about 3 to 4% of carbs. And about 30 grams of car what 30 grams of carbs do you think that that this might many carbs yes too many carbs I don't even know what kind of carbs you're eating diamonds is right here it produces diamond oxidase carrots no only if you're eating carbs like starches I have a gallbladder oh you have a gallbladder to eat over 200 grams of fat winter green sensation in the throat mouth on keto stop eating it do they say eating bitters for histamine, but some people react to bitters? Bitters for your gallbladder. Uh, thank you, B. Alexander, for the fiber. I'm just kind of going over the last things I didn't see. I think that's it. And all the emojis. Thank you, Josh Thomas. Where are you doing that like hot, sweaty emoji for? Like 5,000 times. Uh, know that you are truly appreciated out here, Bonnie. Knew it. Thank you. Yeah, you guys, like, I'm sorry for sounding like a jerk half the time and sarcastic and, you know, cocky. I'm just being silly. Like I said, 98% of my day, if not, sometimes 100% of my day, I'm just by myself with my horses. Like, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not living in Hollywood anymore. So when I do these lives, I kind of just burst, explode with energy. Thank you, Cynthia and Ultra and uh, Ultra Man and Chelsea and Rachel. Oxalate and cruciferous vegetables, they're low. They're low. They're not high. They're more high in greens like spinach. And I'm out in sweet potato and dark chocolate and stevia. Bye! Energy, 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 and a little. I'm a little tired and I still got work to do. Bye, guys. Bye.